Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, time for Off the Press. And we also have on standby Upanabo Nkutaria, who joins the conversation to make sense of some of the big stories. I'd like to start off with the leadership newspaper, and as always, the focus would be on the top stories. Uh, looking at the banner caption, 398 days to go, pressure mounts on President Mohamed Buhari, NAS to pass electoral bill. Governors not afraid of direct primaries, Sule is quoted, that's a rider. The people should have power to choose. That's what Reps is quoted to say. Nigerians need new laws before polls. Jega is quoted. Expunge direct primaries clause. IPAC is also saying, and provisions in new bill are pro-people. NBA is also quoted. Disquiet in APC over fresh plot to extend convention date beyond February. An ousted Malian president, Kaita, dies at 76. PDP governors meet on zoning in rivers. Groups unveil impacts assessment on Vice President Yemo Sibanjo. Now, this is some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper. Move straight to the uh, Daily Independent with the stories to lead a headline there. Uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, may tighten monetary policy to halt reserves depletion. It will strengthen Naira and attract foreign investment analysts. More stories there. NAS turning Nigeria's democracy into plutocracy. Jaga, that's the former um, INEC national uh, chairman there. Uh, Buhari orders major military operation to wipe out bandits. Residents flee as bandits invade Kaduna village. A uh, gunman abduct 15 persons in Niger community that can be found on page six of the Daily Independent. Another story on the front page of the Daily Independent. 2.4 billion Naira judgment debt. Supreme Court restores GTB's appeal against innocent motors. That can be found uh, the story on page 7 of the Daily Independent. Stakeholders query 35 top appointments in aviation agencies' ministry. They say the smack of injustice may unsettle sector. Other stories on the Daily Independent very quickly before we move to the next paper. NDLEA intercepts 1.5 million Tramadol tablets going to Kebi Kano mm, on page 29. Ibrahim Boubacar Keita ousted Mali president dies at 76. I seems, that seems that story is on other papers, a lot of other papers today. Uh, Oshun Guba 2022, why Shola Oyetola's reconciliation failed. Arebe Shola demanded return to single uniform Oyetola's faction. Oyetola's faction, wicked, untruthful. Uh, bad everywhere, I think that's coming from someone in um, the other faction. With PIA NNPC, will earn more revenue for Nigeria. This is coming from um, Ahmed Kari of the NNPC. Those are stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. Away from the Daily Independent, we check out the Nation newspaper this morning. The board caption says, Buni APC chiefs in crucial palais on zoning convention. Uh, underneath, PDP, nobody can stampede us on presidential ticket. Opposition governors meet. And United Kingdom scraps test for unvaccinated travelers from January 26. Jaga urges National Assembly to drop direct primary clause and states to share $750 million for fiscal transparency. Buhari renews crackdown on bandits, ordered to military, quite interesting. And President rides Niger government on directive to defend headquarters. Gunmen on bikes, sack Kaduna village. And uh, you also have Bola Ahmed Tunubu, hopeful to end insecurity. These are some of the headlines on the nation newspaper this morning. Let's go straight to the Punch newspaper next. And uh, with these uh, leading headline in the Punch newspaper, fuel subsidy crisis, states kick as NNPC continues deductions. FAC meets Wednesday. Deductions not justifiable, says Delta. It's injustice against Tikiti. Commissioner, states federal government may clash. Subsidy not under our control says NNPC. It's interesting to see how things will pan out in the coming days. More stories from the front page of the Punch newspaper. NDLEA intercepts Kebi Kanu, a bound 1.5 million tramadol 
seizes Lagos Ports drugs. Ocean Prison inmate's wife gives birth to triplets. Family seeks help. Uh, PDP governors meet decide on 2023 zoning to advise National Working Committee. Very interesting story there. In Namde Kanu, Southeast goes governors, Igbo leaders to meet Buhari, insist on political solution. Electoral bill takes front burners. National Assembly resumes on Tuesday after quite a long uh, recess. Nigeria's debt stock hits 39.6 trillion naira in 11 months, according to reports. Another one from the front page of the Punch newspaper. Insurance firms' assets hit 2.09 trillion naira amidst recapitalization suspension. We have Opunabo Nkotaria who joins the conversation now. It's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Kofi. Thanks for and joining good us. Good morning, viewers. All right, so, so let's start off with the leadership newspaper and uh, uh, the banner caption on the leadership talks about the pressure that's mounted on the president as well as the National Assembly to pass the electoral bill. Is there a possibility that that's going to happen before the 2023 election, understanding the fact that we need at least one year uh, before INA can actually act? I impugn that possibility because... Um have been issue, if you remember even on this program, I stated my doubts. I knew that Mr. President was not going to ascend to that bill. But I foreshadowed it, let me put it that way, because I didn't have a discussion with him. So let me just say, um, foreshadow, not that I knew, that I wasn't going to sign that. The issue of the direct primaries was only a strategy. It was just an excuse. Otherwise, all Mr. President would have done, like he did with the PID, was just expunge that and remit that to the National Assembly to address, while he, has, he would have assented to this other, the other aspects of the, of the bill. But I knew Mr. President was not going to assent to that bill. So it didn't come as a surprise to us when he sent it back to the National Assembly on the special reason of uh, direct primary. Now, if, if you say, the national, so it goes on the National Assembly right now, as we speak, to work on that and send back to the president. But I think uh, when they went on recess, if you remember, I also said on this right program, that that recess was for them to go back and renegotiate, to then to go back and agree on how best to go about it. Otherwise, when you have such a crucial issue, there was no sense in the National Assembly going on recess without addressing it. But they did, because they were wanted to resolve the quagmire between the federal government and the National Assembly, the executive and the National Assembly. So in synopsis, my dear, I strongly believe, I have that conviction, that just as in 2019, Mr. President is not willing to sign that bill into law. We might end up using the old electoral act. But let me quickly state that I we am yet to decipher the reasonableness in that. Because everything, said the direct primaries, which more or less was foisted on political parties, everything in that bill is in the interest of Nigerians and will enhance our electoral process. Hmm. Mr. Nkotara, will it be fair to say that uh, that uh, issue of direct primaries or the provision in the bill, the clause, uh, was foisted on political parties, bearing in mind, for instance, in the front page of this uh, uh, newspaper, that the House of Reps members are saying that the people should decide, and the members of the National Assembly are the representatives of the people who are there to make laws on the behalf of the Nigerian people. Is it fair to say that they are foisting this clause on the political parties? How many National Assembly members uh, conferred with their constituents before they came up with that. First and foremost, it negates the whole essence of democracy. In a democracy, there has to be freedom of choice. Now, I might want to be a member of a political party 
because that political party, the modus operandi of that political party, is in sync with my own belief and conviction. I might want a consensus candidate. I might opt for an indirect primary. I might opt for direct primary. Let the, national, let the various parties be allowed to operate the way they so desire, and it is now the choice of Nigeria to join a political party based on its modus operandi. Now, when you say every political party must operate direct primary, then you have restricted the choices of Nigeria which is antithetical to democratic principle. So I strongly disagree when you say every political party must have the, uh, conduct a direct primary. No. That would be draconian. What the National Assembly members are trying to do is to clip the wings of the governors, forgetting they are beneficiaries of that system they are fighting today. But principally what they want to do is to clip the wings of the governors. Now, even direct consensus or indirect, you cannot clip the wings of the governors because they have the financial muscle. And we all know that politics is all about financial muscle. For now, it has not to be so, but for now in Nigeria, that is what it is. And you will not, for your own selfish interest, want to deny the other person of his right. That is wrong. So let the political parties decide what the mode of primary is. You are not direct, indirect, or consensus. Let the political parties decide. The most important thing is that there is an accommodation. An accommodation, an agreement was reached. It was not foisted on the people. That is the most important thing. So I strongly disagree that every political primary, every political party must adopt the direct primary. That is antithetical to democratic norms and practice. Okay, so um, let's move away from the issue of uh, direct primaries and the bill now and talk about security. What well, the president has renewed crackdown on bandits and has given an order uh, to the military. That's on the Nation newspaper. And that's also, uh, you also have another on the leadership where the president orders major offenses against the bandits. I also remember at the time where there was a report recently where the president is quoted to say that we're hoping that God would answer our prayers as regards the fight against insurgency in Nigeria. And this is a government that promised, you know, security of lives and property as of 2015. So um, where, where does that really leave us? We have a government that is playing havoc with the lives of Nigeria. We have a government that is not sincere in this war against banditry. And I have enough, enough proof to bolster my assertion. One, we thought of uh, Gumi that is still moving freely, making inflammatory statements with impunity, while others are in detention. Two, we have the issue of the former uh, service chiefs, that we are uh, rewarded with ambassadorial appointments for their ineptitude and embezzlement. I did not say so. I am only amplifying what the NSA said and what their own successor, the President Service Chief, including the Chief of Defense, have said that they are not find any equipment that money you are located for. They said it. I did not say it. And this same character, you are rewarded with ambassadorial appointment why the uh, crash express that? So, the federal government has never been serious. Forget the high blood pressure of the setting veterans. And an enemy of concrete performance. That is what, we, that is, what is happening. It's just mounting piles of relevance. Oh, now he's making supplications unto God. That is good. We all must make our prayers to God because it's the Alpha and Omega. As a Christian, but God will only help you when you also help yourself. You cannot not be for your exam and say, oh God, help me to pass the exam. You must be an idiot. You must be a useless idiot for you to ever think that way. And that is what is going on in this country. This is a government that is insensitive to the plight of Nigeria. A government that will tell Nigerians to defend itself. That is repudiation of obligation. That is admission of a fact that you have failed. So right now, we don't even need to know what the president is saying. We are not interested in what the president is saying. He has to go ahead and defend himself. I can no longer defend you. 
the scheme of uh, the Minister for Defense, send it, send it, read straight ever. That you have to defend yourself. Local as these bandits are taking over local governments in the north. The governments are crying out. So what are we talking about? We are not we are no longer interested in the rat soldiers of the of Mr. President. We just pray that not, if the situation does not really get out of hand because the the uh, uh, general obligations of the engagement is threatened on daily, daily basis. On daily basis. So we pray that it doesn't really get out of hand. So there will be anarchy, the reign of anarchy across the length and breadth of this country before this man has his office come 2023, next year. We just pray. But the situation gets worse by the day. It gets better by the day. So I'm no longer uncertain in what Mr. He gave an order to the former IGP. He ordered him to relocate to Bruno. He went to Bruno two months after. Only to be told that the IDP never slept in Bruno. What did Mr. President tell Nigeria? He said he was not aware. And that he was going to investigate that when he, uh, in Abuja, when he got back to Abuja. He never did, and that was the end of it. We never heard anything about that again. So if an IGP can disobey uh, the commander in chief, then what are we talking about? It's just not in politics. You just get up in my Don't worry, we are going to do this. Don't worry, we are going to do that. Uh, uh, Money are being allocated. Yeah, Mr. Nkotara. For this thing. And they have been on daily basis. Mr. Kutare, I mean, we, we're well aware of what the, the president said in his uh, very now famous uh, speech where he said, you know, um, he's relocating the command and control center, you know, of, um, of, of the entire military establishment to the north. Um, looking at, at, at the failures, as you've highlighted, is it about just the executive Recording of the, the, the country being the president? What about the military itself? You know, what blame do they have in all of this? Because it's like saying, oh, you have a football team and every time the football team loses, it's all about the coach. But the players at some point also have to take some responsibility as well. Well, using... Yes, can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Okay. Using the the um, your own analogy, when a football team wins, who takes the credit? The coach. When the players. Notice, who takes the blame? The coach. If today we have a robust economy and there is peace, there is tranquility in the land, who is going to take the credit? Mr. President, so he should also take the place. That's the truth about the boss stops at his table. Then he cannot extricate himself from any uh, uh, blame or any credit. He cannot. The boss stops at his table. So this service chief you are talking about, who is in charge of the service chief? Don't forget, these are characters that wanted that give them just six months, three months, six months. They are going to overwhelm, contain, bandit. Then it was not as bad as this. But the situation got worse under them. And this is a former general. A former general. And that was what they used during their campaign. So the new Nigerians that as a one-time general, he has what it takes, the magic word, to contain this situation. The real one got worse. So I, I, you cannot execute Mr. President by the Mr. Secretary. Today, yes. yes. Are you? Are you? You've talked about the fact that the president is a former general. Well, one one of the um, the stories there, um, of course, report that Tinubu is saying is hopeful to end insecurity. So I'll just uh, end up with that uh, before Messi comes back in. Oh um, my God! Uh, oh, please, do you please, think? Let uh, me <laughs> about all this. All this. Uh, please, please. Uh, I don't don't bring jokers and talk about Tinubu end up together. Let him end up his health. Please. So, so you, you think Tinubu can do what he's saying he will do, which is to end the insecurity as a solution, since the soldier or the former so general why, has failed? Why, 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 why is he not advising Mr. President? He gave up, Mr. President. Why is he not advising him to do what, what he knows he can do better? Why is he not advising Mr. President? Get up, Mr. President. So what are we talking about? This is now like, like, like the Trump has like a campaign. It's a mantra. I will address insecurity in this country. Insecurity in this country because people are dying. If there is hunger. People are talking, hunger, hunger, even if insecurity is causing the death of, let me say, 70 to 80 Nigerians, hunger is causing, is the one causing the death of the remaining. 
We are, we are aware of the economic appreciation. What are they doing? Is this a precarious moving about with bullion van? Is that how you're going to address this again? Let's discuss serious issues, please. Please go ahead with your, with your question. Let's discuss serious issues. Go ahead. All right. Uh, well, this okay, is... Okay, I'm a... listening to you. I'm listening. Are you done? Oh, my God. <laughs> We have to go now for the want of time, but I mean, it's always a delight to have you on the show and we look forward to uh, having more of this conversation some other time. Thank you so much, Upunabon Kotaria, uh, for yeah, sharing your time with us. and Kofi, people are owing me one hour. <laughs> We, 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 pro we promise we'll, we'll look into that. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so we much. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Yes, have thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's it on, uh, you know, the paper review. We look explosive. To, <laughs> very <laughs> explosive. We look forward to another time with Oponobon Kotaria. At uh, this point in time, we're heading straight to the second conversation. We'll be looking at the issue of tax evasion. Of course, at this point in time, non-remittance uh, by government agencies, ministries and departments. Please stick around. We'll be right back.